All right, guys, we'll just get started. Um, just want to say thank you so much for coming out. I know it's quite a wet night, um, so we do appreciate you being here. Um, so this evening, I'm just we've just written up an agenda what we're going to go through. Um, so we'll start off with some important uh, dates for the rest of this term and into term four. The report timeline, so how many more reports uh, you will receive. Um, information about non-assessed students, indicative exams, um, what is Super Friday end of year celebrations, that will include Independence Day, the final year 12 assembly and the valedictory. The VCA end of year exam timetable, so when those exams start and times, and then the all important VTAC application process. So as you see on there, there's quite a lot of dates um, and we do discuss quite a lot of them throughout the presentation. So I'm not going to spend um, too much time going through all of them. Um, I, so on Thursday, August 25th, the parent-teacher meeting interviews from 4pm to 8pm. This will be the last um, set of uh, parent information um, for the year 12s. And the last chance, I guess, to have that contact with teachers um, and to gain an insight onto how your student is doing. Um, Friday, 21st of October, uh, this is probably one of an important day. It's the last day that the year 12s can submit um, coursework, okay? So that is into the third week of term four, and we would hope that all students at that stage would have completed all of their uh, coursework and are focusing more on revision techniques anyways at that stage. Um, October 3rd to the 25th, that is when the language oral exams and vet dance examinations will happen. Um, and then if, as we go down um, Thursday, December 15th is where we will have a celebration for the year 12 results um, with a barbecue and finish off then Wednesday, January the 18th is when round one tertiary offers are released, okay? And like I said, I will we will be discussing the other dates that have been listed. So to go on to the report timeline, um, like I said, there are three more left for you guys. So turn three, you will see another two sets. Week set one will begin Friday the 12th of August, that will go live. And then week set two will be the uh, 16th of September, that is the last day of term three. And then uh, year 12 will receive one set in term four, Friday the 21st of October. I guess these are going to be really important now. Um, it will show you the progress of the students and how they are going. And I guess um, in relation to achievement and effort, um, we do think that they um, go side and side. Um, so it will be a good idea to see um, what effort and what achievement is coming out of uh, the subjects. Again, just to mention, parent-teacher interviews are scheduled on 25th of August. Um, and like I said, that is the final opportunity to discuss um, the child's progress in the subjects um, and hopefully give them the best opportunity to just have a discussion coming up to their exams. For those that are non-assessed students, um, you will complete the VCE um, on the last day of term three. So that is the 16th of September. At that stage, we will expect all coursework to be submitted. Um, myself and Ms. Vaccaro will be giving you, I guess, a form that you will need to get signed by all of your teachers um, to ensure that you have successfully completed all the outcomes. If by any chance that you have not completely finished your coursework at that stage, we will um, ask you to come back into term four and complete whatever you do need to complete at that stage. All right, so I'll discuss um, some of the activities that will be happening for the remainder of the your year 12 stay. So one of the um, days coming up is called Super Friday, and we call it Super Friday for a number of reasons. It is really fun, but it is also a jam-packed day for the year 12 students. <coughs> so we start off with period four, they will begin their VTAC preferences, and Anisha McRae will actually be going through that and helping the students put in their preferences. And then we follow straight into that at 3.15, they will do their very final English SAC um, at the same time. Now, we've got approximate times at this stage. Um, so, it'll be around from 3.15 to 4.15. It may vary slightly by 15 minutes or so, but that will be confirmed closer to the date. So, all the 12s will be doing that at once. 
And then after that, we like to follow on with something that is the amazing race. So uh, almost a scavenger hunt in groups around the school that we're forming activities, collecting clues, obviously, to, to win a prize. And we normally believe that it goes from about 5 o'clock and it could finish anywhere at 6.30. I guess it depends on how quick the kids solve um, the clues. But it's a really fun day. We raise money to go towards a valedictory again to try to reduce the cost of the prices. Um, but that's definitely a day to look out for, and that's on the, the 9th of September. And this is probably one of the, the big ones that we want to talk about. During the holidays, um, we run what's called the indicative exams. Now, this will run from the Friday of the first week of the holidays, which is the 23rd, and it will go until the Thursday of the second week of the holidays, which is the 29th. Now, um, non-assessed students do not need to attend these indicative exams. Um, however, if you are an assessed student, we do say that it's compulsory. The reason behind us choosing to do these exams, especially in such a short time frame, is that after years of sitting down and looking at when the BCO exams are run, we find that most students within a week will do somewhere around four, and they could even do all five exams within a week. So we want to get students used to being able to complete exams in that time frame. And it's an opportunity for them to sit the unit three and four exams to be able to get feedback. Now, we do stress that it is compulsory to attend during the holidays for these classes. Now, they do run from 10 a.m. to 1.15. There's a little bit of variance with that, and I'll discuss it in a moment. Um, but it's really important that the students sit these exams so that they can get the feedback they need in order to prepare for their end-of-year exam. It is also really important, um, and, and like the name says, it's an indicative exam. We use the results from these exams, and teachers... Um, use that to form what grade they believe the students are going to get. So each teacher needs to predict what their student's going to get for the exam. So this will be a basis of what we can use to make our judgment on because it's one of the first attempts that we'll see Unit 3 and 4 tested in an exam condition. So it's really important for us, and I know for myself as a teacher, to be able to see that feedback. Now, when I said at the top that it runs from 10 a.m. to 1.15, it does vary based on what um, subject you're doing. So we do the subjects to mimic what they are in the end of year exam. So, for instance, there we have business, and business has a two-hour and 15-minute exam. So, therefore, if you're a business student and the exam starts at 10 a.m., you will only be required to be here until 12.15, so not until the 1.15. We've got that there in case there are um, the three-hour and 15-minute exams that will run. But generally, it's just based on whatever your subject is. And we will give you a timetable for that closer to the date as we go along. But moving on to some of the fun things. So Friday, October the 21st, will be the last day of attendance um, for the Year 12s. And we like to make it a, a nice and special day. It is very jam-packed. One of the first things we do on Independence Day, as you can see in this photo, we've had a tradition for many years where the students get to school nice and bright and early if they wish to. Um, starting from 6 o'clock, but at 6.30, we will have our Independence Day celebration out in the Oval. So as you can see in the picture, it does get a bit messy with tomato sauce, flour and, you know, water guns going around. So it's a nice little celebration for us to all have some fun, to laugh together, teachers get involved in it. Um, but it's really a, a good environment to see the students just have fun. It's one of their last stress, you know, it's the last day of school and to just enjoy being, a, a, you know, a kid. Um, so it is a very fun day. We will release a bit more information about this the closer we get, so that the do's and the don'ts, um, what is allowed and what's not. But we follow up this morning with a breakfast. So we'll have a barbecue breakfast. It's generally bacon and eggs and sausages and things like that. And then once that's done, we give you enough time to go home, shower off, get changed, and have you back nice and ready for your assembly. So on the last day of attendance for our Year 12s, we do have their graduation assembly, and that will be at 12 p.m., and that's where the students will be dressed up in their lovely gowns um, and presented as graduates. Now, families um, are invited to this as well, and it's a great opportunity to get your photo with your child dressed up in their gown. It's something that a lot of um, parents do want to be involved in, so we do ask that you come down and support your child. Um, we ask that the kids are here by 11 a.m. Um, in the beer rooms. We can get them organised, dressed. We do a little presentation for them, and that way by the time you see them over at the assembly, everything is running smoothly. So again, it started at 6 o'clock your day, so this is only halfway through the day, which then leads to the very end of the night, which is what we've been talking a lot about with our um, Year 12s at the moment, and that's the valedictory dinner. So that's held at Lakeside Reception. Um, and it begins at 6.15 for the Year 12 group photo, so we ask the students to get there nice and early so we can take one last group photo of them all together. 
Um, at this time, we ask that the parents stay in the foyer where there will be finger food and pre-drinks uh, pre provided at 6.30. The formal part of the evening will begin at 7pm and we estimate that the night will conclude around 11.30pm. I'm hoping your child has come home and already given you this letter. We sent it out with them a, at least a month ago. Um, so we're hoping they've sent this home, but just to recap, it is $95 per person, including the student and any guests. Now, each student has been allocated two tickets. Um, now, we do stress that extra tickets, uh, we don't have an unlimited supply of extra tickets, and those extra tickets, first priority will go to split families. Um, and then based on however many seats are left over, then we will start allocating them through. But there is a process and hopefully if the form has been returned, they've indicated who the, the guests are and we put them down in the list. And shortly we'll be going through the process of allocating tables and working out and contacting you if extra tickets are available. Um, we're hoping to finish the floor plans and have these forms in with the extra tickets by this Friday. The forms were due on the 22nd of July, so a little while ago, but we're still waiting on some to come in, but Friday will definitely be the cutoff, and that way we can start organising the rest of the evening. And then once that is over, we move on to the dreaded exams. So we've got a few dates up here. We've got some v um, VCAR performance exams, so anywhere from the 3rd of October to the 25th of October, there'll be language oral exams, and there will also be vet dance performance exams. And then on October the 25th, the music performance exam date has been set. This will then follow through with the VCA written exam, so the English exam beginning on the 26th of October. And they will finish, or the last VCA exam is on November the 16th. So they do stretch over quite a period. They are run by external supervisors, um, and every exam has its own set of requirements and instructions. All of this can be available on the VC Exam Navigator um, site, which outlines all the regulations, and we recommend each student goes on, and we, we recommend parents go on and have a look um, at, at what the do's and don'ts are for the VCA exams and what is accepted. This is the VCA timetable, so you can access this on the VCA website, um, and they've got the 2016 exam timetable. We've also provided students with a hard copy of the exam timetable that they hopefully should have bought home and stuck up somewhere, but oh, there we go, Mr. Drew has extra copies in case anyone needs one, but it's also available for free online. Um, it just goes through all of them. Please note that there are morning sessions, afternoon sessions, and at one stage we've also got exams running in the middle, so we need students to pay close attention to what time their exams start, so that they are here nice and early, we can get them set up and there's less stress um, running as possible. Just a, a few more side notes to help students um, set up for their exams. The VCA website is amazing, so there's everything there ready to go. Um, past exams are there, you'll find your timetable and more specifically your study design, which should be each student's best revision tool. It outlines everything they need to know for their subject, which is an example. So when you go on the VCA website, you can select your subject. The one we've got up here is psychology, but as we have a look through on the side, they've got the study design, which outlines each dot point that will be covered. We've got um, access to past exams and the examiner's report, which are the most valuable feedback that students can receive. Um, and then we've even got study summaries and resources and even glossaries, depending on your subject. Students should know about this by now. I'd be pr quite surprised if they haven't accessed Vika's website already this late into the year. And then we'll follow up with some revision lectures. So earlier in the year, we had some Connect Education lectures that ran mid-year. We're about to release in the upcoming weeks the timetable for the end of year lectures. Um, most of them will be three hour lectures with the um, exception of specialists in physics which will only be having a two hour lecture. Um, they are here internal and will be run at the school. However, there are a number of other opportunities for students to take up external lectures. Now some of these can be costly, some of these can be free. We do recommend that you research which ones you are attending beforehand so you can understand the value behind actually attending it and whether it's worth that money. Most teachers will know of some and for instance in my subject I will recommend certain ones that I know will benefit the, the student. But again, please feel free to, to look up your own. Um, and we've listed quite a, a number of different uh, popular lectures that students can look out for. Vic, um, VU also offer free lectures in the September holidays, so check out their website, because they list them available there. Um, and in the common room, we often put pamphlets for students to have a look at if we receive any information about upcoming uh, revision lectures. But now I'll hand over to the lovely Miss Nisha McRae 
to discuss the important nitty gritty of VTAC. Sure, thank you very much. Uh, again, guys, thank you very much for coming. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Nisha Rokoi, I'm the Student Pathways Manager here at the college, uh, and I'll be helping your students uh, with the next step. So, what happens at the end of year 12? How are you going to apply? VTAC is the body that we apply to. So, VTAC stands for Victorian uh, Tertiary Admissions Centre. We apply to these guys. VTAC is a company. VTAC then do all of the external applications for us. So instead of your students applying to Deakin, to RMIT, to Victoria University, to Swinburne, we apply to them and then they do all the applications for us. There is a, a series of different ways to have a look at it, whether you have a look on, uh, I don't know if you guys have Twitter, there is a blog and Facebook as well, but there is lots of different means to access their information. Some important dates, and it is inside your packs, and I need to let you guys know that you are the VIP group, so thank you very much for coming out. Just I'm going to do it. in relation to your packs, obviously your name is at the top. Underneath that is your VCAR number. So we will use your VCAR number to start um, the applying process from VTAC. And then underneath that is your appointment time. So whether that be with Miss Smith or myself, please pop a reminder on your phone. Um, for you guys to come and talk to us about what it is that you are applying for. Okay? Thank you. So, applications open today uh, and they actually close during the school holidays. But for us, to save my sanity, we will apply and have it done on that Super Friday. So the kids have got the next five, six weeks to get all of that organised. So it's in so they don't have to worry about it during the school holidays. C's is something that we will talk about again today. That has a different closing date and so does the scholarships. But you just need to be very mindful about when everything closes. It is not like a school assignment that you hand in late and you're like, it's okay, I'll hand it in tomorrow. It doesn't work like that. They are cutthroat with the times. So please make sure you pay attention to the date and the time. And the very exciting thing, your first round offers will come out in January of next year. You guys get access before me. So you guys find out at 2 o'clock. Uh, whether you log on or we will register to get a text message as well. Um, <clears throat> and they come out on the, at 2 o'clock. So, the first part is how we are going to start to find a course. For those of you who want to, there is an app that you can download which does exactly the same thing as what the web page does. But for those of you who are app inclined, you can certainly download an app. Another thing that is out there as well is called the VTAC magazine. It's not brilliant, but I've just put this and included this in case you have friends at other schools and they use it so you know what they are talking about. We will be using Course Search, so the online having a look at everything. In previous years, there was a VTAC guide. This is the first year that they're not having a guide. Everything is done online. One of the things that you guys need to be looking out for is the codes that are on there. VET is that fancy word of saying TAFE. So they go from certificate through, sorry, certificate twos through to your advanced diplomas. Higher education is at university level. Masters and grad is not us. So an undergraduate is the first thing that you do after year 12. And a graduate is once you've graduated your university course. So that is not us. Uh, and for those of you who are into teaching, um, the purple code will be for you guys. Uh, how it looks when you type it in, so I've just typed in a Bachelor of Arts. Right at the top it says a Bachelor of Arts and it's got the green code HE, which means higher education, so that's indicating that it's a university degree. After that, it will tell you where it is, so the institution that it is, and the length of the course as well. After that, it's then drop down boxes all the way down, so it gives you a course description, um, it will tell you your prerequisites, and if there's any other extra requirements that you have to do. But everything is found on that page for that specific course and institution. So, for example, if you were thinking about applying for a Bachelor of Arts, this one was Swinburne, you'd also check out Victoria University or Deakin or RMIT and you would start to filter that way. There are two types of applications that you need to be aware of. We have the Y12, which means Year 12, and the NY12 is non-year 12. We are the year 12 applications. The non-year 12s are for people that are returning to study, that are mature age students, or even last year's students who are going to reapply. 
but we are the Year 12, so we look for all of the courses and all of the requirements that say, wait, uh, sorry, wait, why 12? When you guys are starting to look at your courses, and I know that all of you have already started doing all of this. Yes. Uh, one thing that you need to look at is your prerequisites. A prerequisite is something that you have to have to be able to apply. If you don't have a specific prerequisite, and I'm going to turn around and go specialist maths, then you can't apply for that course, and it is a waste of your preferences. So please make sure that when you are looking and you are searching for your courses, that you meet the prerequisites. Also, there's something called selection, uh, selection requirements. This here is maybe an additional form that you need to fill out. It could be that you need to attend an information session. It could be that you need to attend an interview. So please watch those, particularly the art students, as in your fine arts, uh, musicians, and anything to do with media. So just be very careful of the extra requirements that you do. One of the first culling methods that universities will do is if you haven't submitted it, then you're automatically on the no pile. Even if you've met the ATAR score, even if you've got the prerequisites, a very simple thing is you didn't hand in the form by the due date, then you're already on the no. On the no. So just mind that as well. Some things are your enrolment considerations. A student of mine a couple of years ago wanted to get into paramedicine. <clears throat> didn't pay attention to the enrolment consideration that he needed to have his P's before then. He was too lazy over the summer break, did too much partying, didn't get his P's. So got an offer, was accepted, went to enrol, and then found out that he had to show his P's so he wasn't able to enrol in that course. So just be mindful of anything like that. Uh, and if there's any additional uh, considerations, which is very rare for Year 12s. The applying. Um, the Year 12s during their SIP class next Friday are going to apply. So we will sit down, they will bring their netbooks, and they will actually register and apply for a course uh, on the 19th. Uh, I will step them through everything that they need to do. Once they have done that, they have registered and have an account. All of the information that they need to do in applying will come from this page here. We have this year, which is new, eight preferences. So previously we've had 12, this time we're down to eight. How I want them to do this is the first two courses are their dream courses. I've got everything going for me, I'm doing amazing with my studies, I'm aiming for a 99.95, this is a course that I'm going to get. Second preference, it's the same boat. Three, four, five and six is a bit of a reality. All right, I'm probably not going to get a 99.95, maybe looking in the 80s, I could be in the 70s, this is really what I want to do. And then the last couple of preferences need to be backup options. The what if. What if I get to my English exam and I freak out and the first thing I do is remember my name and then I spend three hours sitting there staring at the page. It's the what if. What if I don't get the ATAR score that I need? What is my pathway options to get me to where I need to be? Can I start in this course? And after six months to 12 months, I transfer into the course that I want. Students will, in our, in our meetings with Ms. Smith, with Ms. Smith and myself, we will be investigating all of those pathway options. But students normally have a really good idea, if I don't get into here, I can start off with this one and then move across later. After submitting the course application, they'll get an email to confirm it. So don't think that I've done it and you sit there and go, oh my god, I don't know. You guys will get an email to confirm that you've uh, applied or made changes. There is a $32 fee for VTAC to do all of this, uh, and that needs to be paid for, and I'm going to say valedictory. So as long as we apply before the closing date, uh, which is the 29th, <coughs> we, are, we still get the $32 fee. Is that per course? Or? No, one oh, application. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, once we have done that, it will open up C's, which I will talk about, and it will also open up scholarships as well for the students. Scholarships is something the students will do during the school holidays and on their own time. Every person is going to get a different set of scholarships depending on what they apply for. So if I have a student who is interested in all of the biomedicine degrees, they will get a course or a scholarship list 
based around those. If I have a female in engineering, she is going to get a whole different courses that perhaps the male version doesn't get. So it's just going to be very specific for the type of course you're applying for and the institution that you are applying for as well. So don't freak out if the person your bestie has got a scholarship list which is different to yours. It will, it will vary. A personal statement is something that some courses require you to do. It's an extra boost to tell an institution about yourselves, whether you did community work, whether you've picked the same subjects from Year 9 and you know exactly what it is that you want to do, where you did work experience, if you do volunteering, if you work. It just shows an institution something else. I encourage all students to, to do this, even though it may not be a part of their preferences. If they are cutthroat between person A and person B, you've taken the effort to put a personal statement in. They're like, oh, okay, having a read. Yep, let's give it to this person who perhaps doesn't. All right, so I encourage everyone to do that one. In the requirement part down the bottom, it's called a stat or uh, an LSET. Year 12s don't need to do this. So don't get confused. If there's a question that says, have you sat this test? We don't need to do it. It's for the non-year 12s. C's. C's is the next category that stands for Special Entry Access Scheme. What this does is it recognises that not all year 12s have had a smooth year. It goes by location. So, for example, we can't be competed against perhaps the people who live in Turak that pay $50 million for private tutors that perhaps pay for their grades. Um, we can't compete against that. It also talks about living conditions. Sorry, I've... Uh, perhaps living conditions, if you've had any difficult circumstances. What CS does is it bumps up your ATAR score. So if we have a look at the example that is shown, we have a look uh, at Emma. Emma got an amazing score of 80. Well done for her. But she didn't get into her course. AJ, who got an ATAR score of 75, had a C's bonus plus a subject bonus, which actually brought their ATAR score up to an 86, uh, which bumped the AJ, I'm going to assume a man, him over Emma. So C's is something, if you sort of kind of think that this could be you, I highly encourage you to apply. I, as a career teacher, and you guys as students, will never know what your C's <coughs> bonus is. It is something that the universities handle, and I encourage all of us to do it because we don't know what kind of effect that it has. So if you qualify for one of the next lot of categories, um, we will. So applying for C's, it will only open up on your home page of VTAC after you have applied for one course. So when we have our day in SIP in two Fridays time, we will apply for a fake course or one preference, a semi kind of sort of thinking about this one which will then open up our C's for us. The different categories of C's, we will all apply for category one, uh, personal information and location. We are classified as an underrepresented school based purely by our postcode. The universities said this is Melbourne, drew a circle around the outside and said anyone outside of this circle is classified as an underrepresented school because it's too hard to get to. I will take that, that is fine. So we get bonus points for that. <coughs> Category two is difficult circumstances. If you have had a difficult time in year 11 or year 12 or previous to this uh, that has affected your study, this is something that you will apply for. Category three is if your child is receiving uh, Centrelink payments or falls under your card for Centrelink they will qualify for a disadvantaged financial background. It also opens up more scholarships for them as well. Category four is disability or medical conditions. And I'm not talking about I had a cold for a week. I'm talking about something that was over a long term, that you got glandular fever and you had to battle that for the last three months, um, or anything more than that that affects your studies. This is a category to apply for. They don't just take your word for it. Okay, yes. I have a question. Please. On that previous screen. Yep. What happens if you can fill in all four? Great, you'll apply for all four. Okay. Yes. Uh, so the C's documentation that we have, you guys, 
as in students, will write an impact statement. So you will turn around and tell the people of VTAC how your situation, your circumstance, whatever has happened to you, has affected your study. Uh, we have Deakin coming out in a couple of weeks to show you how to write a really good statement. Uh, and then you guys will upload this to VTAC. We also need a responsible person to back your statement up. It can't be someone in the immediate family and it can't be someone with the same surname as you. So if we are talking about a doctor, a specialist, a lawyer, uh, something that you need to back up one of your other categories, we need them to write a, sport, a supporting statement to say that yes, your story is true uh, and this is what we have done to help you or support you or give you during your difficult time. C's this year is going to be all online. So previously before, um, I accepted notes from doctors, notes from solicitors, notes from specialists, and we attached a cover sheet. This year, we need to upload everything. So if you guys already have a letter uh, from your doctor, your specialist, to say what your circumstance is, great. What we need to do at that point is scan it, and we upload it to VTAC. So there's no handing in via post anymore. Uh, everything is done um, online. The second thing is uh, that VTAC has introduced uh, is giving your responsible person a link. So you log on to your VTAC and you will email your responsible person login details. They will log in onto the computer, type, back up your story, press save, and it was already done for you. So that way you don't have to worry about scanning and uploading. You just send them the link with the password to log in, type it all in there, and you guys don't have to worry about it from there. You guys don't get to see what they write, but you will get a notification to say that it is done. So you don't have to worry about harassing. So if it's a responsible person, if it's a medical condition, yep. um, I can see now my doctor's going to say I don't have time to fill that out, yep. but I will write a letter. Perfect. So that's okay? Yeah, that's fine. So what we will do is we will scan it yep. and then upload it that way. There is a cover sheet that goes with it so they know, they, VTAC, know that this is um, the student, it has a specific barcode, this is the document they were attaching and we upload it that way. It does, it actually reduces the amount of people that actually see it. Not that I've ever read anyone's documents but you guys are responsible for it. You upload it and then that way you know that it's been there. They are fine. Uh, scholarships is the next thing. Uh, as I said, each one of you is going to have a different set of scholarships based on your gender, based on the, the courses that you are applying for. So don't freak out if your bestie has got a different set to you. One thing that I do really need to push is the Victoria University Scholarship, if this is one that you are going for. This is a free scholarship. So there are two of them. There's only 100 schools, uh, and because of the connection that Hoppers has with VU, the first scholarship is for 5000 a year for three years and you get to spend it on your choice. So if you need a new laptop, if you need to update the car, whatever it is, VU will give it to you. The second scholarship is for a TAFE course, so whether it be a certificate or a diploma level, uh, and that's $2,500 for two years. Inside your packs is the information for that one there. That is separate to VTAC, so you actually have to go on VU's website, look at it, and register that way. There is a code that you will find um, on that piece of paper there. That is another one, if VU is on your list, is a really good one to apply for. A lot of kids don't apply for it, uh, for whatever reason. Last year, I think Mr. Derouge and I gave it out to someone with an ATAR score, I think, of 52. So... We don't know what happened there. We really encourage it uh, and it's frustrating that we almost throw money away uh, and we don't give it to a deserving person. The next thing is change of preference. So we put all of this information in by the end of this term, then the ATAR scores come out. And we're hoping we're in the ballpark, but sometimes we are not. <coughs> change of preference is a week that allows you to... I was aiming for an 80 and I came out with a 55. I perhaps need to shuffle my preferences around. I need to take some of the 81s out and I need to put some that are much more achievable and I need to work out my pathway courses. Uh, I am here uh, during that time, so you guys are long gone. 
Uh, exams are finished, but I sit here with Miss Smith in the careers room for you and your parents to come up and access help uh, to have a look at all of your change of preferences. After that, um, there are different rounds. So the first round offers will come out in January. You are allowed to change your preferences in between the, the, the second and the third round, okay? So if you put in, and I'm randomly going to say uh, Swinburne Arts, and you sat there and go, do you know what, uh, I didn't get an offer, or I want to change my offer in between that, you certainly can, okay? Log back onto VTAC, uh, and you just order, reorder, or delete your preferences. Um... <clears throat> Offers will come out on the 18th of January at 2 p.m. Uh, you can get it via an email. Uh, you can you can register your mobile phone, so you can get an uh, 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 sorry you can get it that way. Uh, and for those of you, when we do the applying stage, there is also a part where you can have your it's just your first initial and your surname, your postcode, and the offer you can also get printed in the paper as well. <coughs> Uh, one of a couple of things is going to happen when you get your offer. You're either going to accept it and go, yes, this is the one that I want. I highly encourage all of you, whatever offer you get in the first round, you take it. What will happen after the rounds is say you got your third or your fourth preference, you still go back into the pool to get your one, two or three preference. But if you don't take anything, you're sitting there in no man's land, you may not get another offer. So just know if you got quite a low preference in your first round, still accept your offer because VTAC will always try and offer you a higher preference. Okay? Another thing is called defer, meaning that I'm not intending to study next year, but I need that institution to hold my place. So they will hold it for 2017. They will contact you at the end to say in 2018, we held that spot for you. Are you wanting to come back to us? The last one is you reject your offer. So you sit there and go, do you know what? I put in an application. I don't want to study anymore. I'm going to go travel the world. Uh, I'm going to go work. And you do nothing. Um, and that means that you are not accepting your offer. And you may not get anything after that. Uh, if you didn't get the offer that you want, you can certainly rechange your preferences. But accept your offer that you have. Uh, and VTAC will always try and get you a, a, a higher preference. Something that we will tick the box for during the application process is called a supplementary offer. A supplementary offer may mean that I want to offer you something similar to the course that you have applied for. For example, you might want to apply for a Bachelor of Arts at Monash University. They didn't offer you that or they may have offered you something quite lower on your VTAC preferences, but I'm going to offer you a Bachelor of Business Management at Monash. Again, nothing to do with what you want to do, but a supplementary offer means that you are going to go to Monash, that they could be using this as a stepping stone to get you to where you need to be. Another thing that you guys need to be really careful of too uh, is institutions do sneaky things and offer you, offer you email versions of things. So, for example, a student was offered from VTAC a certificate for in graphic design. He accepted it and it was amazing. Two days later, he got an email from RMIT saying, we want you sitting in the diploma course. Wasn't on his VTAC preferences, but RMIT came in and offered him the same thing, which is done via email. You can accept it and it still, is a part, it still gets you to where you need to be. So even though it didn't come from VTAC directly, it came from RMIT, that was his offer. So if it's not doom and gloom, uh, and also check your emails even if you're away, uh, in January because you could get lots of offers as well and I knew a student last year who got up to three um, all via email from the different institutions that she was applying for uh, which was different from her VTAC one so she actually got to sit there and choose between the three that she was interested in applying for uh, is what is then used as that ranking system to get you into an institution how it is used they will take English your next three after that, and then anything after that is worth 10%, okay? Now, what you guys can do as parents to help, it is a really confusing and daunting time for kids, and they tend to have the ostrich approach, where they just bury their head in the sand and think that it will all go away, but it doesn't. It's still here. 
Um, a good thing to talk about is your likes and your dislikes. If they're sitting there going, yeah, yeah, I really, really want to get into nursing, except you freak out when you look at blood. Alrighty? Maybe you need to look at a different aspect of nursing and perhaps, perhaps look at mental health nursing or something like that. An interesting thing to talk about with the students is location. I had a doozy last year of a student who got his top preference at uh, La Trobe Bandura. Like, yay, he got his top preference, this is awesome. He then, rung, he then rung me a couple of days later and he's like, Miss, do you know where Bandura is? I'm like, yeah, I do. And he goes, well, it's at La Trobe, Melbourne. I'm like, Melbourne, Bandura. Oh, I don't want that anymore. So then we had to put in a retraction to try and get his second preference, which was a deacon at Geelong. So talk about that. Are you going to be driving at the time? Are you going to be catching public transport? Anything on the other side is at least two trains and two trams and about two and a half hours just to get there. You've got to come back as well. So talk about travel and what you're going to do to get there. Talk about options. What will you do after you graduate from this course? What are your career prospects at the end of it? Is there a high uh, employment rate or is it low? So talk about all of those things. It's amazing to go away and apply for all the things and to turn around and say, yes, I'm sitting in this course, but what do you do at the end of that? Um, another thing that I need you guys to consider is if Deakin University is offering psychology uh, and ACU is offering psychology, what is the difference between the two? Does one of them have work placement for a year? So when you are applying for jobs at the end of your degree, do you have days in a clinic or do you just have school hours? So pay attention to that. Also check out universities with travel as well. A lot of universities at the moment have opportunities for you to go study overseas. Is that something that you are interested in doing? So have a look at that. Attend open days. Open days is going to be like, woo, amazing, have a look what we offer. But you have to love the campus. You have to love the institution where you are going because your fee help or your hex debt uh, is going to be is paying for this. So please make sure that you enjoy and then love the campus where you are going. For example, a student was like, no, I don't do VU. Uh, went to VU's open day with friends, fell in love with it, went to Deakin Geelong and she's like, oh, I really thought Deakin Geelong waterfront campus was going to be the better one, but I actually really like VU. So attend open days inside your packs and certainly what I've emailed out to you guys is a giant list of all of the institutions with their open days. Uh, start making contact now with your responsible person if you are thinking about applying for C's. Okay, if you need to make a specialist appointment, if you need to go talk to a doctor or a solicitor, um, start making those appointments now because before you know it, C's will close. Or specialists are really hard to get into. Students, uh, what these guys are going to be doing is they're going to be sitting a very similar session with this uh, on Wednesday. Period four. Uh, for those students who do VET, it will be a repeat session Thursday, period one. Uh, they will be attending their interviews, um, which are on the sticky labels inside your packs. Uh, hopefully they're going to open days, hopefully they're having discussions with their teacher, whether it be their classroom teacher, whether it be someone in the senior school, whether that be someone in careers. Uh, looking at institutions and having a look at their web pages. So, are you jumping on and having a look at what uh, Swinburne does? What extra requirements they have? Do they have travel uh, for overseas? Uh, and then also, we need to be thinking about the what if. The backup option, if everything doesn't go to plan and I don't get the ATAR score that I need or I don't get the offer that I need, what is my stepping stone to get me to where I need to be? Do I need to start off in a diploma course first and then branch over? Do I need to be looking at the same course but at a different institution with the lower ATAR score and then jump over that way. We, students, we will be discussing all of this in your pathway meetings but also talk about it with your families as well. That is it from me. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free. Guys, if you want to come along, guys, when I say parents, parents, if you guys want to come along, to the student appointments or you'd like to make your own appointment, Miss Smith and I are certainly here to help. Thank you very much for coming.